Okay, Bob, so here we are at the Space Center. My favorite place, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite subject. Yeah, well, s surrounded by, by progress, we've got satellites all over mm -hmm. the place, a, an actual NASA spacesuit behind yeah. me. Yeah. We asked you here, of course, though, to talk about some of the fascinating science stories of 2017. And, and I guess we should start by making clear, this isn't a, a ranking as No, such. no, these are just five stories that I found really interesting this year and uh, really caught my attention. Okay, well, let's get started. So we're starting with a space story, and, yes. and, and for most people this one might be a little abstract. Uh, it is. It's gravitational waves, uh, which were actually discovered last year for the first time, and there was a lot of hoopla about that. Einstein predicted these, and he didn't even think we'd find them. But they're ripples in space and time itself, like the space between you and I stretching and, and getting weird, and you know, they ripple right across the entire universe. Well, this year they found them again, because in science you need to find things more than once. Last year they found two black holes colliding with each other, which was great. This year they did a second observation. They saw two neutron stars, which are different from black holes and in a different place. So it shows that the technology works. They also were given the Nobel Prize for this work. Right. So scientists realized this is important. This is the beginning of a new era of astronomy because gravitational waves go right across the universe and they're not absorbed by dirt and dust or anything. They can go anywhere you want perhaps even back to the very beginning of time in the Big Bang itself. So every time we have a new way of looking at the universe, we started with light, we found radio waves, x-rays, all these different things, now gravitational waves, who knows what we're gonna find, but astronomers feel this is a new era of gravitational wave astronomy, so it's very exciting. Okay, and, and this wasn't the only space story on your radar? No. <laughs> Okay, so, so this next space story, this was a long time in the making? Yes, right? where the last one was the beginning of an era, this was the end of an era. The Cassini spacecraft spent 13 years orbiting Saturn, our most beautiful planet after the Earth, with the magnificent rings going around it. It not only told us about this gas planet, it's a planet that's lighter than water. It's all made of gas. And billions of little snowballs the size of your head, the size of your fist going around it, forming these magnificent rings. Cassini saw that in detail, but it also saw Saturn's moons, and Saturn's got more than 60 moons going around it, but two of them in particular. One called Enceladus, which is totally covered in ice, and the ice has cracks in it, and underneath the ice is an ocean, a liquid ocean, with that water spewing out into space. Cassini flew right through those plumes. It saw not only water, it saw organic chemicals. You and I, Andrew, are made of organic chemicals. Right. And it also saw chemicals that are similar to what we have here on Earth coming from our hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean where hot water comes up and there's all kinds of life around it. So is there life in this moon? We don't know, but it's really enticing. Right, because did that change the way we see our own solar system? Well, yeah, but life might be in worlds rather than on worlds, right? And then there's another bizarre moon that it saw called Titan that has lakes, rivers, and rain, but instead of water, like it does here on the Earth, it's methane. It's methane gas that turns into a liquid and forms these bizarre lakes, and they also think Titan might also have an ocean inside it as well. So Saturn is a stunning, stunning system. Cassini plowed itself into the atmosphere of Saturn to end its mission, but we definitely have to go back and do a little ice fishing on that moon. <laughs> okay, uh, let's bring things back to Earth. Okay. <laughs> When it comes to smarts, man versus machine, yeah. 2017 wasn't actually all that great of a year for man. Right? No, <laughs> machines won. This uh, program called AlphaGo, yeah. which beat the world champion at the ancient Chinese game of Go. This is more complicated than chess to play. It has more variables to it. And we've had computers playing games and beating people at chess for a long time. What was different about AlphaGo is that it learned the game itself. Usually when we teach computers how to play games, we give them all the moves that humans have done. You teach them? Yeah, so here's what humans have done. There's all the varieties, and the computer just says, okay, that looks like a good move, I'm gonna choose that. They didn't do that with AlphaGo. They just gave it the rules of the game and said, here, go learn it yourself, and it did. And it learned it faster than had they taught it what humans do. And it even came up with moves that humans have never done. And it beat the world champion. And since then, it has beaten another computer, <laughs> the, the world chess computer game. It's beaten that. So this is a new kind of machine learning. Usually machines learn because we teach them things. Here's what we know, and you do this yourself. But this is a case of a computer learning by itself, artificial intelligence. Some people think this is a little spooky. Do we want machines learning on their own? 
wrong? Well, no kidding, because yeah. I mean, it makes me think, is, is every problem in life solvable? It's just a question well, of, of computation and well, it'll get there eventually? Uh, eventually, yes, but what's, the thing about these computers, they're really good at doing one thing. They're not going to take over the world. We're not building ourselves. So you These say. are specialized <laughs> machines. But it's just a, a whole new level of artificial intelligence where the machines are doing their, their own learning. It's going to be very interesting to see where this goes. Okay, well, well let's keep on the theme of solvable problems. Uh, this is a big one coming up here. Bob, why was climate change one of these stories to watch for you for 2017? Well, what was happening, Andrew, this year is uh, signs that climate change is finally here and it's real. You know, I've been reporting on climate change since 1978. Since before you were born, I've been <laughs> reporting on this. And they've been making all these predictions about what were going to happen in the future. Well, the future is here. We had a hurricane season this year that had, had 17 hurricanes, which is not a record number. And the scientists said, we're not going to get more storms, but the ones we get are going to be stronger. And what did we see? We saw three major storms hit North America. We had Harvey, Irma, and Maria that hit Puerto Rico, doing terrible damage there. They hit Cuba, hit Florida, and hit Texas. $200 billion worth of damage. That's the most destructive storms in history. And the reason that they're stronger is because the Atlantic Ocean is warmer and warm water is like rocket fuel for hurricanes. So they're stronger and they're coming further into land. Usually hurricanes turn north. They come across the Atlantic and turn north. But now they're turning north later, which means they're going to hit land more. And even the remnants have come up here into Canada. Right. So that prediction is coming through. You know, you talk about natural disasters. I'm a BC boy, so, so I think of wildfires, right? Absolutely. We had one of the worst seasons just this, you know, just several months ago and down in California. That's Same correct. Way. So wildfires are happening because we've had dry summers. California's been in drought for almost a decade now and everything is just tinder dry and the ocean currents in the Pacific are changing as well. So the weather patterns are changing and we're getting more wildfires, which were also predicted by climate change models. And we're losing ice. We hear about the ice disappearing in the the Arctic, well, we're also losing it in the southern hemisphere as well. And an iceberg the size of Prince Edward Island broke off the Antarctic Peninsula and drifted out to sea. So all the signs are here. Climate change is not a debate anymore. We do, we got to get out of this thing about whether or not it's happening. It's real. It's here, and it's time to move on and do something about it. Okay, let's uh, let's move on. Uh, as you say, to to this was a one of a kind experience. <laughs> This was a story that people had to witness very carefully. Yes. How did you go about doing it? <laughs> well, the uh, solar eclipse, this was my fifth solar eclipse. I've chased them all over the world. And you have to go to the path of totality. And this one went right across the United States. I drove to Casper, Wyoming on my motorcycle to see this thing. And it was just fabulous. What was neat about it is about 200 million people in North America got to see a solar eclipse. It's a celestial event. It's just a shadow passing over the Earth. But it's so spectacular to see the sun totally covered by the moon, it goes dark, it gets colder, uh, you've got sunset gold all the way around you, people go crazy. <laughs> it's, it's an emotional event and it's humbling because you realize that we're part of this great cosmos and we can't do anything about it. It's going to happen anyway. You see the sun as you don't normally see it with this beautiful atmosphere sticking out of it, a silver fur that is the, the corona of the sun and it's, it's just a stunning, stunning event and it was really great that so many people got to see this thing. Usually you have to go to a uh, obscure places. Right. And there's another one coming that Canada will be able to see in 2024. It's going to go through Niagara Falls and southern Ontario and up into the Maritimes. So maybe you'll get to catch that one. <laughs> well, hey, you never know. You never know. Bob, always a pleasure to hear you talk science. Uh, thanks for sharing. You're very welcome, Andrew. My pleasure. <laughs>